Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to explain the principles of use of elevators on the plaster putty models. First of all, we should all have two sizes of ele straight elevators or any elevators in our clinic. Minimum two sizes elevators are recommended. Smaller one or then bigger one. First, how to hold the straight elevator? To hold the straight elevator correctly, you put your elevator on the palm, align it parallelly to the long axis of the palm. Now place thumb over the thumb depression like this and keep the index finger parallel to the blade. The concavity should be facing the tooth to be elevated. This is how you hold it. Now next is rest and supports by the left hand. Very important. So how to use rest and support? So if you are standing on third quadrant, working on third quadrant, place your middle finger lingually to the tooth to be elevated and index finger or the occlusal plane and thumb holding the mandible. If you are working on fourth quadrant, then keep your thumb like this lingually and fingers circling the mandible. First step for using elevator, any elevator, is wedging. Wedging is nothing but to insert the elevator blade between the tooth and the alveolar bone. So how to do wedging? To do the wedging, first understand the contact area. You have to keep the blade of the elevator parallel to the contact area like this. Don't insert like this. And don't insert like this. This is not parallel to the contact area. Yes. So this is how you are supposed to start wedging. So the wedging should be started. Wedging should be done in the small screwing manner. Back and forth movement. Back and forth movement like this. It will generate some forces on the adjacent tooth initially. This is wedging. Next step is liver and fulcrum principle. In this, you take buccal alveolar bone as a support or as a fulcrum in the thermolar region and you start elevating the tooth. So this is how it should be in thermolar region specifically. Once you have wedged, now you start moving the tooth distally. That is called distalization movement. Mind it, it is not yet elevation. It is called distalization. It is called creating more space between two teeth and pushing the tooth distally in. Look at the rotation of the hand. Yes. So the tooth is moved distally now. Third one is moved distally. Now, next is elevation. Taking buccal and the bone as a fulcrum, you start using liver and fulcrum and start elevating the tooth upward like this. Okay. Make sure entire force generated is supported by the buccal alveolar bone. As you can see here, never use adjacent tooth as a fulcrum until and unless you want to remove the adjacent tooth also. Otherwise, never take support the adjacent tooth. Never do like this. Watch carefully. You should never do like this. This will or generate excessive force to the adjacent force and both tooth will get excited. But yes, if you want to remove both the teeth, then you can do this. Okay. Another way to use straight elevator, many times it is not possible for us to use mesially. In that case, we can use parallel placement technique. Parallel placement technique you can use when an isolated tooth is there, when mesially tooth is very weak or implant supported processes is there. So how to do parallel placement? Same. The grass should be same, preferably. Support is same. Now, place it parallelly in the buccal uh, alveolar bone, which you have created the space by using buccal gutter technique. Or sometimes it is directly, it is you can place it. And slowly you start it 
elevating the principles of elevator remain same liver and fulcrum and fulcrum should be your alveolar bone and this is how it will get elevated never use the elevator for the tooth which is present in between the arch always use the elevator for the tooth which is the last in the arch for example you never use it between the arch like first premolar or second premolar and molar if you want to remove molar but you cannot use it between the premolar and the molar because the premolar is weak here so by re trying to remove the molar you may luxate or fracture premolar so never use elevator in this clinical situation until unless your molar is the last tooth first molar is the last tooth then you can probably use it do not use the straight element the mesial interdental region if the mesial tooth is carious and weak like you can see here if i use this elevator here seven may get fractured so never use elevator in this scenario in this technique you use parallel placement technique never use in the premolar and molar also never use the elevator lingually never use the elevator like this or like this or like this so lingually we never use elevators any elevator for that matter never use elevators buccally in anterior region up to first molars until unless you have already decided to sacrifice the buccal bone like in this scenario suppose root tip is there which is fractured at the level of the bone and you may have you may want to remove it with the straight elevator but never use like this if you use elevator in this scenario like this then you can see the buccal bone will get fractured okay so in case you really want to do this it's okay otherwise if you want to preserve the buccal bone use section the root and then use the straight elevator to remove the section root piece how to do that let's see it so this is the situation so now we will section with the burr in micromotor you section the root this is how you should do it so creating the punch cut and then completing the section up to the tip now you put the straight elevator or luxator between the the in the section part and just split complete the split yes so once you do this it will complete the split and now you can remove both the pieces two pieces or three pieces or four pieces separately so this is how you can preserve the bone and remove the root piece without harming the bone dangers of using elevators what dangers we have so if you don't you don't use the lingual guard then your elevator may slip and damage the tongue like this or the lingual mucosa like this so always and always use finger guard dangers of using elevators using crayer blindly in lower second or third molar region so if you want to use crayer elevator in lower third molar or second molar region then you should be very careful as you can see here the infill alveolar now lies very close to the roots of second and sometimes third molar so if you use it blindly and if you are too deep you will not realize that you may damage the sharp tip of the crayer elevator may damage infill alveolar now so never ever use like this dangers of elevators using straight elevator in maxillary molar region in maxillary molar region the roots are pushed into the sinus most of the time so as you can see here now in this clinical scenario if you use elevator straight elevator using parallel to the tooth if you hold like this and if you use like this and if you generate some force the tooth may get luxated and your elevator may suddenly slip into the sinus with or without the tooth or the root pieces like this you can see the sinus is 
like here only just above the roots of the first molar or second molar so you may enter into the sinus so to prevent this in maxillary posterior region always use straight elevator in the perpendicular manner by keeping it perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth in interdental region you can use the straight elevator this is the safest way to use straight elevator in maxillary molar region